All right, so this is one of my favorite projects. It's a projectile launcher. We can use it to calculate trajectories and to uh, experiment with kinematics. This particular launcher allows us to change the angle as well as the force that we use to launch projectiles. And uh, the, the basic concept for it was designed in Dave Berggren's class in, at High Tech High. He was a mentor of mine, and uh, he's a great engineering teacher. So happy to be able to take one of his projects and, and show it to you guys. So we, we have a number of tools that we need here, a drill, a circular saw, some squares, spiral bits, spade bits, a file, wrenches, and a hacksaw. And uh, so we're, we're going to use three quarter inch oak plywood. And uh, there's three main pieces. There's a, a top, a bottom, and then a, a, a smaller piece. The, the top and bottom are one foot square, and the smaller piece is five inches square, and that's used to adjust the angles. And then there's a variety of assorted hardware. 5 16 bolts and uh, 2 inch PVC for the, the launcher cradle, etc. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and mark the center. We're using our uh, 3 quarter inch aluminum to do that. It's a nice straight edge. And we're going to measure off that center to mark the spot for the 5 16 bolt that will hold the spring in place. That 5 16 bolt has a nut above the wood and below the wood, and those nuts are, tight, are, are uh, tightened against each other. Uh, so that it, the nut, the bolt doesn't move. So we just took a, uh, a 7 8 drill bit and, and countersunk a hole a quarter of an inch, and then we took the 5 16 bit and went the rest of the way through, and that's so that the nut can sit below the surface. And we've got a pattern we've drawn on the computer, and we're going to use that pattern to create uh, the uh, arc of holes that we'll need to be able to launch the uh, launcher in different positions. So this is how far back we'll pull the swing bar, swing arm. And we used a 3 seconds inch bit. Now we're using a 5 16 inch bit. And the first bit was basically to create pilot holes. And so the second bit uh, will create the actual holes that we'll put the pin in. And uh, by doing it that way, we can make the, uh, the holes a little bit more accurate. And uh, those holes uh, cover a 180 degree arc and they're about 10, uh, t they're 10 degrees uh, apart. So now we're going to make the hole for the center. Again, we're using our 7 8 inch spade bit. We're going to go down a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to use our uh, 5 16 uh, spiral bit to drill the hole the rest of the way. And so what we've done now is we've measured the location of our stop, our pivot point, and our spring bolt. And we are going to create some countersunk holes in this, uh, this bottom piece. And uh, so we're going to use a, a one inch spade bit and a 5 8 inch spade bit to create a space for the washer that's on the bottom of the top board and the nut that's on the bottom of the top board. Those are sticking down so they can sit inside the bottom board and that way we can launch at zero, degree ang uh, zero degrees. Um, so we only need to go down about an eighth of an inch. The tape's measuring an eighth of an inch. We're using a one inch spade bit and a 5 8 inch spade bit, which are actually larger than they need to be just in case there's a, an alignment issue. It'll make sure everything's lined up uh, perfectly. So if uh, the hinges are just a little off or something, the boards will still close flat. So now we're putting the hinges together. We've got our aluminum straight bar there. It's our uh, tubular, uh, square tubular aluminum. And uh, we're using it to line up the pieces and we're clamping them down. We've got our hinges. They're set in from the outside edges about one inch. And we're going to use our rafter square to make sure they're nice and straight. Again, that will contribute to everything lining up when we get done. So we marked our holes. We've got a 16th inch uh, spiral bit. And on that 16th inch spiral bit, we put a piece of tape about a half inch up. And so we're drilling those holes out for the uh, screws. We're going to go ahead and put the screws in the hinge. Not all the way, but almost all the way. Just enough to get it to line up. Double check the alignment there. Draw the uh, holes on the other side. And then we take the uh, 16th inch bit and go ahead and put those holes in. We're gonna go ahead and put the screws in right after that. And then we'll go and tighten down all the screws the rest of the way, and that because we're sure that, the, that they look like they're lined up well. Okay, so now the next part is uh, we're making the uh, five inch square piece that's got the arc of holes that allows us to adjust the height. And so we've already made three cuts on it. This is the final cut. And uh, we're going to use that uh, square tubular aluminum again, aluminum again as a fence. And we've got our two clamps in place. We're just trimming off the edge there. So that's the final cut we needed to make on that 5-inch uh, square piece. 
and we just filed off the edges. We've got a pattern already drawn up from the computer. We're taping it on. You can use a spray adhesive, but tape doesn't leave a residue, so that's why I chose to use the tape. Again, we're getting everything centered up. Using our 3 32nd inch drill bit, we are drilling holes in that piece, and then we're going to change that 3 32nd inch bit out and uh, make the final hole with uh, a 5 16 inch bit. And those, uh, the 3 32nd inch holes uh, basically just, again, act as a guide for the larger bit. So now we're measuring its location on the actual board, making sure that it's lined up correctly. And we're also creating the, the marks for our three screws that are going to hold that five inch piece with the, the, that adjusts the angle in place. And so that the, the, the marks are exactly three eighths of an inch up, which is halfway through the, uh, the piece of, of plywood that's on the bottom. And we're just using a 16th inch bit and drilling uh, through, we, we went ahead and put the first screw in and so we could hold it, the, the piece in place and then we drilled the other holes and we'll tighten all the screws down to make sure everything's in place and then we'll check and make sure everything lines up and, and it does. Okay, so that's good. And so now we're going to make the actual aluminum swing arm. So it's 11 inches long, we're marking that, we're holding it in place with a clamp. I discovered that we needed actually another clamp to keep uh, the bar from moving because it's important that this piece is cut very straight. It just saves a lot of time. It's hard to hard to smooth it later. So we're cutting this again. We've got two clamps in place, and that's at 11 inches. We'll clean the edge of this up with a uh, with a file. It's a bastard mill file. And again, knocking all the burrs off, making sure it's nice and smooth. So now we're measuring the center of this piece. So we want the dead center. And uh, that is the uh, place we're going to put the uh, pivot. And the pivot is a, a 5 16 bolt. So we'll start off again with a pilot hole. This is a 3 32nd inch bit. We'll put our pilot hole right in the center there. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and measure the holes for the cradle, which is made out of PVC, and the hole for the eye screw, uh, which the spring is attached to. And uh, so we're marking those holes, and they're 90 degrees opposed to the pivot hole. And we're using that 3 32nd inch bit again to create those pilot holes so we can make sure everything's lined up and where it should be. So once we've done that, we're going to take our, our larger drill bit. And uh, I believe that is a uh, 11 64 inch bit. And we're also going to use, a, I think it's a 7 32nd bit for the eye screw. And so we made those holes. And now we're going to cut our cradle out, and we're using a hacksaw, and we're just going to cut right through it with a hacksaw. Now, the hacksaw is fast and easy, but it does leave a messy edge. So we'll trim the edge off with a uh, break-off blade knife or utility knife. And once we got it somewhat clean, we'll file it smooth with our, with our file. And again, the file only cuts when you're pushing away from you. And uh, so it's important that that's smooth so it, doesn't, so it slides freely over the wood. And... Uh, so those, those edges are, uh, you know, we just went over all of them, tried to clean them up, keep them nice and square and smooth. So now we're going to go ahead and mark the place for the, the uh, machine screw that holds the cradle in place. And uh, it's a 3 eighths of an inch up on the side of the PVC and then right in the center. So we have a pilot hole drilled, and we went ahead and drilled our final hole there. And uh, now we're going to assemble all the hardware on the, uh, on the device. So we're putting our, our nut on the back and on the front and tighten, tightening that one down. That's our uh, spring pin or our three six, six, or 5 16 bolt. And now we're putting the pieces together for the, the central spin arm. And that has, it has a, a lock washer and a nut and a washer on the bottom. And then there's a nut right in the, underneath the, uh, the top there. And there's two nylon washers and they hold the bolt in place and, and let the swing arm move freely. And then we have our stop, and that's uh, two big nylon bushings and two washers and a nut. And we can move that around if we need to, but it uh, sort of absorbs some of the shock. And we have our cradle that's made out of our 2-inch PVC and our machine screw. We're just tightening that down to make sure everything works out well. And now we're putting our spring on, and that's a tricky spring to get on. you got to use those needle nose pliers and just get it right around the edge of the eye screw. So now everything's uh, in place. looks like it's moving and functioning well. I'm going to take it out for a, uh, for a test run. And uh, we have a little sand set up to see if we can find out where the ball will land. And we fire it here. 
and it goes off to the left, which isn't terribly surprising. So we thought about maybe making the uh, uh, doing some uh, adaptations to the launcher to get the ball to go straight. And uh, so we found out that if we held the ball right at the uh, zero line, or right at the, the same line as, as, as the axis of the rotation, uh, we could get the ball to fly straight. But the trick was how do we hold it in place? So we looked at creating divots, and then uh, I grabbed a paper clip and said, maybe we can uh, bend it into a loop and uh, use it to just lightly hold the, the ping pong ball in place. And then when the swing arm comes around and hits it, it should fly straight. So the uh, paper clip is bent with, it's got two bends in it. Uh, so there's one at the bottom that comes out from under the board, the top board, and then one at the top that comes over, and then there's a loop at the end of it. And uh, there are two uh, pan head wood screws that hold the uh, paper clip loop in place. And when you're making that, you got to be kind of careful because the paper clip work hardens really easily and it'll break if you bend it back and forth a lot. So you have to, to kind of go with it uh, just one time there. So once we have that back in place and it's all screwed together, we'll uh, double check its position with a ping pong ball and make sure everything's lined up right. And then we're going to uh, reattach our spring. Use our uh, needle nose pliers again to reattach that spring and run it through the eye screw. It's a little tricky there. Okay, so we're gonna continue attaching the hardware and putting the rest of the pieces on. We're gonna get ready for a test launch. We'll uh, cock the launcher back, use a pencil to hold it in place, and then put the ping pong ball in and, uh, and fire it away. And the ping pong ball flies much more straight now.